When you talk about buying the newest generation Honda Rebel, there's one discussion that always comes up, and that's whether you should buy the Rebel 300 or the Rebel 500. Today, I'm here to settle that debate. I personally owned a Rebel 300 for about six months, and now I've owned this Rebel 500 for about a year, so I'm going to weigh in on my experiences with both bikes, and then we'll go over whether you should get the 300 or the 500. Perfect. Welcome back to Life of Birch. This is Birch. Quick shameless plug. If you're new here and you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and smash the subscribe button. If you found this video, you obviously like motorcycles and you obviously like the Honda Rebel 500 or 300 and this channel has plenty of both of those things. So make sure to smash the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content and we will jump straight into it. All right, now I'll start off by saying the answer to whether you should buy a 300 or a 500 isn't just a cookie cutter answer where everybody should get the 300 or everybody should get the 500. 500, which is kind of why I figured I would go over my experiences with both of the bikes because each of the bikes is suited towards a different kind of rider and a different kind of person. So first we'll go over my experience with the 300, then we'll go over my experience with the 500, and then I'll wrap up by kind of saying who I think each of those bikes is geared towards. All right, so we'll start off with the 300. Like I said, I owned the 300 for about six months, and that was, I guess, like a year and a half ago that I owned that bike. Now, I will say that I started out originally looking for a 500 and the 300 just kind of fell into my lap. At that point, I had already been riding for about four years, so I figured that the 300 would possibly be too small for me, but I kind of kept my options open when I was searching for the bike because really what I was looking for was just a good deal on one of them so I could try it out regardless. And I ended up having an incredible deal on the 300 fall into my lap where I got the 300 for only 2,000 bucks. So I figured at that price point, there's no way that I could keep searching for a 500. I had to just go ahead and, and scoop up that deal on the 300 while it was there. Now at the time I was riding a VFR 750 which is obviously quite a lot more bike than the 300 but honestly the switch from the 750 to the 300 was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Don't get me wrong the 300 isn't the fastest thing in the world but for being a 300 it did have a little bit more get up and go than I was expecting. When I hopped on the 300 the first thing that caught my attention was how light the bike was. Not only was it light but I could tell that all the center of gravity was kind of lower than it is on a sport bike so not only was it light but it was just really manageable because of how low all the weight sat. It had enough get up and go to scoot around town without any issue but as soon as I jumped on the highway I could tell that while it could do it it definitely wasn't made to do it. Its top speed is listed at about 85 miles per hour and I ended up getting it up to I think about 92 when I tested out the top speed run which you can check out link in the description and the link should be in the top right hand corner of the video right now for you to check out. So with that said a top speed of 85 or 90 isn't terrible, but if you're cruising on the highway around 75, then you're pretty close to maxing out. So the bike is really wrung out as you're cruising on the highway. And not only that, but the light weight of the bike also comes into play when you're cruising on the highway because it really just tends to get blown all over the place anytime that there's a gust of wind because there's not a whole lot of weight to the bike that's going to keep it planted. Where the bike really shines, for me anyways, was just cruising around through downtown or hitting up like my favorite twisty back roads. I feel like the bike was really designed for that because it's just so light and nimble and flickable. It just makes the bike a ton of fun. The only downside though is that because it has the small 300 motor, the gears are all really close together. So one of the first things that I noticed when I was cruising through downtown and going on all the back roads is that I had to shift the bike a lot, like a lot more than I was used to. Now obviously that's not a big deal once you're up to cruising speeds and you just stay in the same gear, but when you're going through an area where you're staying slow and there's stop and go and all that kind of good stuff, it's just, uh, it gets a little bit tiring having to shift constantly. And not only that, but because the engine doesn't have a whole lot of power, I did find myself having to downshift a lot more if I'm, say, coming up to a hill or something like that. You have to downshift in order to keep that power so that you can keep going up the hill at the speed you want to be at. Now, after owning the bike for about a month or so, I decided that I wanted to throw an exhaust on the bike because in stock form, really any bike isn't going to sound that great. And especially a little 300, it just kind of sounded like a little sewing machine. So I decided to throw an 
exhaust on the bike and I got the Two Brothers Racing exhaust. Now while that exhaust sounded great, I was faced with another issue with the bike that I hadn't realized before and that's the fact that the catalytic converter on the 300 is actually in the muffler, not in the header pipe. So anytime that you put a slip on exhaust on the bike, it removes the catalytic converter and made the bike so unbearably loud. And don't get me wrong, I like a loud motorcycle as I'm sure you can tell by the shorty exhaust that I have on my 500 right now, but the exhaust on the 300 was absolutely unbearably loud. And I mean, honestly, I was kind of like nervous going anywhere where I'd have to be cruising above 45 miles per hour just because of how much the exhaust just droned and droned and just honestly, when I was done, my eardrums were hurting. And the Two Brothers exhaust isn't really like the smallest muffler by any means either. It's not like I had a shorty exhaust on that bike. I actually intentionally got a bigger muffler hoping that it would be a little bit quieter, but it was the loudest, most obnoxious bike I've ever had to ride. As a matter of fact, when I ended up selling that bike to my buddy and we would ride together, it was actually hard for me to focus on when I should shift my bike because all I could hear was his bike. <laughs> Overall though, my experience with the 300 was great, had more power than I thought it would. It did better on the highway than I thought it would, but that's not to say that I would ever want to take that bike on the highway ever again. I loved how light it was, how flickable and nimble it was, and for the price, you really couldn't beat it. Now at the end of the day, I did only end up having that bike for about six months, and if I had to say the exact reason why I decided to get rid of it, it would just be the total lack of power. Given the fact that I had been riding for a few years already at that point, and I came from my VFR 750, which I still had the whole time that I had the 300. It just did not have enough get up and go for me whatsoever. And the fact that I had to fear any time I had to ride higher than 45 miles per hour because the exhaust would just feel like it was making my ears bleed, I just figured it was the best bet to sell it and then keep my eyes peeled for the 500. So after about six months of ownership with the 300, I sold it to my buddy so that he could have it as his first bike. And then I kept searching and eventually ended up finding a great deal on my 500 that I have now. Now when I first rode the 500, it was obvious it had a lot more power than the 300. It was also obvious it wasn't the most powerful bike in the world, but it had a lot more power than the 300. The best way that I could describe the highway capability switch is the fact that I just told people that the 500 could cruise easily at the 300's top speed. I could hop on the highway and easily cruise at 85 on this bike, whereas 85 was the maximum output that the 300 could could do. And not only that, but the 500 weighs a bit more too, so it just felt so much more planted on the highway. Now compared to other bikes I've ridden in the past, obviously it's still not an outstanding highway performer compared to those bikes, but for just a 500, it does great on the highway. And compared to the 300, you could just tell it felt so much more firm and planted when you were riding at highway speeds. Now while the extra weight of the 500 did help it to feel more planted at highway speeds, one of the first things that I noticed about the 500 was actually the fact that it's low speeds, it really didn't feel any heavier. If memory serves correctly, there's about a 40 pound difference between the 300 and 500, but again, because the weight is so low on these bikes, the weight difference really is negligible when you're going around town or on the twisties. Granted, that could have been because there was a several month time difference between when I rode the two bikes, so if I rode them back to back in the same day, then I might feel a big weight difference, but honestly, if the weight is what is keeping you from one or the other, it's really not noticeable at all in my eyes. Now again, after after only about a week, I decided it was time to put exhaust on the 500, and on the bright side, I now knew that the catalytic converter was in the header pipe of the 500 versus the muffler like it was with the 300, so I was a little bit more assured that the bike wasn't going to be so obnoxiously loud as the 300 was. And because of that, I decided to go with the Shorty GP slip-on for the 500, which is obviously much, much smaller than the Two Brothers exhaust that I had on the 300, and even with that said, my 500 is light years light years quieter than my 300 was and is a lot more manageable at highway speeds because it doesn't just drone constantly on and on like the 300 seemed to. It was also pretty obvious that with the 500 versus the 300, I had to shift a lot less than I did with the 300. Whether that was riding around downtown or riding on twisty roads or even just where I had to downshift to get up a hill with the 300, I had to do that a lot less with the 500 because of the power difference. So that was definitely a 
huge plus that I noticed right off the bat. And then performance aside, honestly, just the look of the 500, I think I ended up preferring a little bit more. Now, of course, structurally, they're the exact same bike as far as frame size and dimensions and everything like that. But just looking at it, the 500's engine fills out the frame so much nicer that I feel like, aesthetically speaking, I like the look of the 500 a lot better. But of course, that's subjective. But you know, aside from that, the bikes felt identical as far as the comfort and the suspension. The handling characteristics felt the exact same for the most part, aside from the slight weight difference. And overall, the 500 felt just as nimble and flickable and light and fun as the 300 did. Now, at the end of the day, the 500 just feels so much more capable than the 300 did in my eyes. And that should be obvious given the fact that I've had this bike for close to a year and had no plans on selling it until the 1100 was released. Whereas the 300, I was over its capabilities in just six months. Oh, looks like we're at a dead end. So let's pull in here and soak in the view real quick. The joys of riding a motorcycle. You gotta love it. All right, enough of the ADD, back to what I was saying. The 500 is just so much more capable than the 300. I feel like it's much more of an all-around bike than the 300 is. I think the 300 would be a perfect little city commuter, little twisty back road fun haver, if that's even a word. Whereas the 500 can do all of that just as well, if not better, but then it can still be a quick little highway commuter or something like that. So with that said, let's get into who I think each of these bikes is right for. And again, this is all subjective. You know, you can ride whatever bike you want. This is just based off of my experiences with the bikes. The 300, I feel like, is great for a first-time rider who might be a little bit intimidated by the added power and weight of the 500. I think it's great for somebody who might have a lower budget but still wants to find something that's new and that's fun. And I think it's great for somebody who might live in a city and they just need to do some commuting through stop-and-go traffic and need something light. But I don't think it's great for necessarily an experienced rider who's going to want to be doing any kind of highway traveling. And I think if you buy it, you need to be okay with the fact that you may potentially outgrow it within a few months. But with that said, because the 300 is typically so much cheaper than the 500, it's a little bit less of a financial burden if you do buy it and end up outgrowing it versus the 500. Now the 500, I feel like is great not only for the beginning rider, but also could be good for a seasoned rider that's just looking for a light, fun commuter, or possibly even someone who used to ride motorcycles, took a bit of a break and they're going to come back and they want something light, nimble, and fun to relearn the basics on. The 500 could serve its purpose great as a little city commuter just like the 300 could. However, its capabilities on the highway make it so much better for a highway commuter than the 300. So I think if you plan on doing any sort of highway commuting at all, the 500 is the way to go. I think it has enough power to keep seasoned riders happy, but still not too much power to where new riders are going to feel intimidated. At the end of the day, regardless of what kind of rider you are, I think it's safe to say the 300 is more of a short-term bike, whereas the 500 could have some longevity to it. Now, like I said, there's no cookie-cutter answer as to everyone should get the 300 or everyone should get the 500. At the end of the day, it comes down to you and what your preferences are and what you're most comfortable on. So the best advice I could give you is just to find a way to get out there and try out both bikes and see what you think is going to be best for you. There could be a seasoned rider that disagrees with me and thinks the 300 is all that they need. There could be a new rider that thinks that I'm wrong and that the 500 isn't even enough for them. At the end of the day, it all comes down to you and your preferences, what kind of riding you're going to be doing, and what you feel most comfortable on. Because at the end of the day, if you don't feel comfortable on your bike, you're not going to get out and ride it. And that's the whole point of having a bike, is getting out, riding, and having fun. So I hope that that kind of helps shed some light on the debate of whether the 300 or the 500 is the quote-unquote right bike. I think it's just all about what's right for you, and what's right for you might not be right for the next guy, and vice versa. At the end of the day, they're both great bikes and you're going to have fun on both of them. It's just a matter of what you're looking for out of it. Now, those of you who have ridden both of them, make sure to leave a comment below and let me know what you agree with, whether you think that I'm uh, onto something here or if I'm totally off base and let me know what your experience was with both bikes. It's always interesting to hear kind of the, uh, the differences in opinion from people who have ridden the same bikes, but all got kind of different experiences out of it. And of course, like I said, if you're new here, please go ahead and smash that subscribe button. I got tons of Rebel content. If you want to head over to my channel and check out more of it and there's tons more to come make sure to leave a comment letting me know what you thought smash that like button so the youtube algorithm keeps showing this to more people thanks so much for watching as always you know i love you guys and appreciate the support more than you know and we will catch you on the next one peace